So when we talk about projectile motion, we're talking about an object that is moving in both the horizontal and vertical direction at the same time. Um, so for a simple example, what we're going to start off with is, let's say that we have a cliff that is 10 meters high. And we're going to throw a ball horizontally off the cliff at 8 meters per second. Now the path that this is going to make is something like that, right? And that's how far away from the cliff it would land. And that's what I want to find out. Okay, How far away from the base of the cliff is this uh, ball going to land after we throw it at 8 meters per second off of this cliff? The key to solving these problems is to remember that uh, motion acts independently in our horizontal and vertical direction. So we have to take each into account independently in order to solve this problem. And when we look at the y direction, we treat it just like a regular falling object. When we go in the x direction, we treat it just like an object moving horizontally, and we keep that separate from each other. So one important thing to remember is that if we're in the y direction, this is just like a falling object. Okay, If it's a falling object, then that means our acceleration in the y direction is going to be equal to negative g, right? Our negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So it's going to accelerate in exactly the same way in that direction uh, as any other object would if it were just falling. And then in the x direction, Once we release this ball, there's no other force acting on it, neglecting air resistance. Uh, and because there's no other force acting on it, nothing pushing or pulling it, there's no acceleration. So our acceleration in the x direction in these type of problems, in any projectile motion problem, is always going to be 0 meters per second squared. So to solve a projectile motion problem, we're going to separate everything into its two components. So we'll have our x direction. Actually, let's use the other color for that. We'll have our x direction and our y direction. Okay. So in our x direction, we know that our acceleration is going to be equal to 0 meters per second squared. I know that my initial position in the x direction is 0 meters. Right. I start here at 0 meters and I end some distance away. I know that that's what I'm looking for, Right. is how far away did it go. Uh, I also don't know how much time it took. That might be something important. Um, I know that my velocity initially in just the x direction, notice I'm being very specific here with my variables and saying my initial velocity just in the x direction, is my 8 meters per second. Right? If I throw it exactly horizontal, all of that is in that direction, 8 meters per second. If I go to my y direction, I know my acceleration is gravity, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. I know that my initial y position is 10 meters up on the cliff. My final y position is 0 meters. I don't know the time it takes to fall. Uh, and I know that my velocity in the, initially in the y direction, because everything initially is in the horizontal direction, that's just like dropping an object. I haven't given it any velocity in this up or down direction. Everything's just horizontal. So my initial velocity in the y direction is just 0 meters per second. So one thing I notice right away here is that I'm missing two variables, whereas here I'm really only missing one. Um, so that might be a clue for me as to how to find x, right? I'm not going to be able to, with my equations, find this x without a time. All of my equations that I would use have time in them, and if I don't have time, I can't find it. However, I could find time here, and the time that it takes it to fall is the same time that it would take it to cover this distance, because it's going to land right here at that exact time. So let's start with our y equation. Y equals one half a t squared plus v naught in the y direction times t plus y naught. So my final y position is zero equals one half my acceleration negative nine point eight meters per second squared times time squared. Well, my initial velocity remember was zero, so that all goes to zero, and that's ten meters. If I solve for time correctly, I should get that time is equal to the square root of 2 times 10 meters, so I move my 10 meters, negative 10 meters, I move my 10 meters per second over and multiplied by 2, divided by my 9.8 meters per second squared, so my time is equal to 1.43 seconds. So there's my time, 1.43 seconds, and then I can go to my x direction because now I know that this time is 1.43 seconds, and I can say, well, x 
equals one half a t squared plus v naught x t plus x naught. Well, I know that's zero. I know that my acceleration is zero in the x direction. So x is going to equal my initial velocity in the x direction, eight meters per second, times my time of 1.43 seconds, which is going to be equal to my final answer of 11.43 meters. Okay. So to kind of sum up what we did here, we took everything, we separated it into x and y, saw what we had in each case, solved for time in our y direction, took that time and plugged it into our x direction, and solve for x. This is going to be a very, very common way of solving these problems, is in one direction to find time, and then in the other direction find what you're looking for. It's going to happen a lot, so kind of get used to this process. So now we're going to look at a very general case for a problem uh, that's maybe a little bit more complicated than the one we have before, but what we're going to get out of this is a, an equation that's going to be very useful for us. So if I take a, a projectile and let's say I launch it at some initial velocity, v naught, and that's at an angle of theta, so some angle. I'm going to have my v naught in just the x direction and my v naught in just the y direction. So there's my two components, my x and y components. So we're resolving a vector here. Uh, if we remember from the last video, we know that v naught x is equal to v naught cosine theta and v naught and my y direction is equal to v naught sine theta. And what I want to solve for here is as this projectile goes through its flight, how far does it go? Okay. So let's start with the process we did before where we took our y equation. So y equals 1 half negative g right from gravity, t, t, t squared v naught y t plus y naught and solve for time and then we can plug it into our x direction. So y naught is zero, y is zero. Then I'm going to add one half g t squared over to this side. So one half now positive g t squared equals v naught y times t. Divide both sides by t, and one of those disappears. So I get one half g t equals v naught in the y direction. Uh, and I want to solve for time. Remember to plug that in. So time is equal to 2 times v naught y. Well, I'm going to make a little substitution here because remember v naught y is v naught sine theta. So v naught sine theta over g. Then I'll go to my x direction. So remember x equals my initial velocity in the x direction times time plus x naught. Notice I've left off the acceleration term since acceleration is 0 x naught is 0, since we're starting at 0, and then we go some distance. And so I'm going to take this right here and plug it in for time. So I'm going to say x equals, well, v naught cosine theta for that substitution, times my time from the y component to v naught sine theta over g. And now I'm going to work on simplifying this. So if I multiply these things together, uh, v naught times v naught is going to give me v naught squared times 2 cosine theta sine theta divided by g. A little complicated, so I'm going to use a, a trig identity, not one I expect you to remember, um, to kind of simplify this. And instead of calling this x, I'm going to call it r for range of a projectile. So it's going to be v naught squared. My trig identity helps me out here because 2 cosine theta sine theta is equal to the sine of 2 theta divided by g. And this is an equation you'll want to write down because it will be very useful. Anytime we're launching a projectile from 0 and it lands at 0, this will immediately answer the question, how far did it go? Right? If you know how fast it started and at what angle, immediately you can tell how far it went, which is a very, very useful equation for us. So what I want to cover here real quick is maximum height of a projectile. All right, so if we, have, if we have a projectile that goes like this, I want to know what was its maximum height off of the ground. This is kind of a, a little stumbling block for us, so that's why we want to make a, a shortcut for us and have a nice simple equation that we can use. Um, if we go back to our kinematic equations, one equation that sticks out, right? If I say, 
Okay, this was launched with a velocity of v naught at some angle theta. And then we had our x component, right, our v naught in the x. We kind of zoom in here a little bit. We'd have our v naught in the x, and here we'd have our v naught in the y, right? And then we could solve from there. Now, time seemed to be a critical piece for us sometimes, but it's actually not going to be here. In fact, because I don't know time, I want the one equation that doesn't have time in it. Okay. So the equation we're going to look at here is v squared equals v naught, this time in the y direction squared, plus 2a, or in this case negative g, times y minus y naught. Okay. And so what we want to do here is figure out, well, what is y here? What's my max height? To do that, we have to remember one important thing. The velocity in the y direction at maximum height of something that we throw up in the air, if you recall, is 0 meters per second. Now, that's not the case for the x direction here. right? I am going to have some velocity in the x direction at this point. Okay. I'm sorry, this should be just vy and not v not y, right? Its velocity at that point is zero meters per second, regardless of what it started with down here, okay? The x component, right, is gonna remain the same the entire time because there's no acceleration, but my vy right at that moment is gonna be zero because that's right when it turns from rising to falling, okay? Same as if we threw it straight up in the air. So, back to our equation here. I know that my velocity at that point when we're at max height is zero, okay? So I have 0 equals v naught y squared plus 2 times negative g times y minus y naught. Well, I started at the ground, right, 0. I want to know how far above where I started I threw it, so that just becomes y. And so we're going to try and solve now for y to call that our maximum height. So to do that, I'm going to add this term over here. So I get 2gy equals v naught y squared. And then y, or our maximum height in this case, is equal to v naught y squared over 2g. Okay, So that's going to help us out a little bit. Normally solving for these max height problems uh, can be a little confusing sometimes, especially because of this situation where I do have a velocity in x but not in y. It can be a little tricky. So we created this shortcut for ourselves so that we can avoid that problem. So anytime we're asked about maximum height, there's your equation right there. Your max height v naught y squared over 2g.